Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again and thanks for joining us for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather on this uh, fifth day of February 2017. Yesterday's satellite imagery showed uh, not a lot of going on anywhere here, especially over the interior. Big area of high pressure, uh, got a system way down there to the south and clear skies across the panhandle, windy conditions and then uh, some clouds kind of skirting the Arctic coast up there as they go over the top of the ridge. And then the system here coming northward with the uh, rain and gale force winds out over the central Aleutians with uh, clouds all the way up to the Pribilofs there with a band of moisture was slipping off to the northwest. All of that light, the heavy precipitation back in through here with the winds. And even that wasn't that heavy either wind or rain wise in that area. Up here to the north or northwest there near Wrangell Island, kind of a system up there that uh, pretty much did what it was supposed to and come right on down onto the western Arctic coast there with some clouds, areas of flurries, patchy fog, another batch uh, slipping off over that way. Nothing too heavy, nothing was expected that was heavy, but uh, looks like that's going to continue to drop southward. Then we ended up with some clouds here that uh, mostly were dry clouds from the uh, Cusquam Delta out across Nunavak Island. Pribilofs there right on the edge of that frontal boundary cloud shield and that's pretty much stalled out there over the central Aleutians and actually starting to pull back to the west a little bit here in the frame but no change over the interior. See some clouds up here slowly sagging southward there toward the Fairbanks area, living good. Living good or live and good, however you pronounce that. South of the mountains, temperatures warmer here. And that's showing up in the, uh, especially this afternoon as the uh, grayer, what appears to be clearer conditions. And North Gulf Coast looking really good. No change over the panhandle. Another dry day, mostly sunny, if not just flat out sunny. Still gusty on those northeast winds, uh, but nothing all that strong. As you can see, low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska on the analysis for this afternoon. That is uh, increasing the clouds out there from what they were late last week and yesterday. Uh, kind of a significant increase. Uh, any showers that were that developed, I don't think were, I didn't see anything showing up on the Middleton Island radar. So it looks like just clouds at this point. The areas of uh, dense fog that occurred at times uh, really hit and miss, kind of jumping around there for Northern Cook Inlet, Anchorage into the Knick Arm areas, and then fair up in the interior. Windy conditions, again, just breezy. Uh, no advisories or warnings out for winds, but there are small craft advisories in the marine forecasts. And uh, clear skies all the way down across the Queen Charlotte's southeast flow across the Bering Sea, especially out to the west there. Winds a little stronger out toward Chimio, that low center. Just to the southwest, but the frontal boundary right through here, keeping the rain locked in over Adak and Atka with the gusty winds. Mild conditions as well. Temperatures into the uh, mid-40s there at Atka this afternoon and less wind, no precipitation for the Fox Islands. Pribilofs in the clouds, lots of clear skies here. Bristol Bay and on the uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. And then again, a few flurries here along the Seward Peninsula with that upper system dropping southward. And it also kicked off uh, more in the way of clouds with some flurries, light snow, very light snow, uh, just trace amounts here along portions of the Arctic coast. And the forecast for tonight, that's going to continue and kind of slide on down and should uh, start showing up around St. Lawrence Island. Nothing significant. Winds only about uh, 20 knots or so, maybe 22 or 3 knots, and that's about it. Up to the Bering Strait, lightening up again in the Chukchi Sea, but uh, kind of uh, mostly cloudy, areas of flurries, that type of pattern through that area. No change over the interior, just a few clouds, dry conditions, light winds. Temperatures generally below zero and uh, a night tonight, much like uh, last night here for South Central Alaska, especially the Cook Inlet areas, uh, look for that fog condition 
uh, to come and go again throughout the night into tomorrow as well. And that'll probably at least last through tomorrow night the way it looks right now and otherwise fair across Prince William Sound. Start showing up some showers now in the Gulf of Alaska here of the rain or snow variety, especially around Kodiak Island, kind of looking at an increasing threat of some uh, light precipitation, kind of showery there. Uh, still some high snow levels, but the dew points seem low enough that that could go be in the form of snow. But uh, either way there, just kind of uh, light snow showers. Southeast coast, no change. Clear skies, Yakutat, all the way down to Metlakatla, even Dixon Entrance and the Queen Charlotte. This system staying down to the south there. Uh, breezy conditions, especially the channeled areas, could see gusts 35, 40 miles an hour. And then uh, that's uh, about it. Pretty nice here for Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula out toward the Pribilofs and that front keeping it wet there over the central Aleutians. But uh, starting to uh, really fall apart uh, a little bit there. Still hanging on to tomorrow with some periods of light rain and fog. Less in the way of wind though. Um, lighter winds even out to the west. Dry, partly sunny, unalaska Nikolsky. Mostly sunny for the Alaska Peninsula, hopefully. Maybe some clearing for the Pribilofs as well. Kind of a ridging condition extending from the Russian Far East down through there. Upper level low, again coming southward. Pretty good chance of some light snow, definitely cloudy skies here for the uh, Yukon Delta and down to about Nunavak Island, much the same as what uh, looked like it was going to do yesterday as that system continues to slide southward. Interior south of the Alaska Range, maybe from the Tanana Valley on south, not much change from today here, even the North Gulf Coast. May start picking up a few clouds there, but I don't think there'll be much of an increase at all. That low center now down to the south, but some of that moisture will wrap back in and bring a chance of rain and snow showers to Kodiak Island uh, area, maybe back across Shelikoff Strait. Whatever falls will definitely be on the light side there, but probably will be in the form of snow with any elevation at all. And uh, otherwise, looks like more clouds, maybe a few flurries here, Koyukuk Valley over toward the western Yukon Flats area. Nothing significant though, just uh, maybe a few more clouds than what you've seen. Mostly cloudy north slopes, especially north of the Brooks Range, areas of flurries and fog as well out along the Arctic coast there and the Panhandle. Still got that high over the, U over the Yukon there. 1,000 millibar low down near uh, uh, Vancouver Island. And then the uh, gradient between the two there, keeping it pretty breezy here uh, over the Panhandle. But uh, lighter winds out along the coastline with small craft advisories uh, over the inside waters, especially the central and northern inside waters on up to Lynn Canal. And then on Tuesday, uh, much the same pattern here uh, along the coast, although the wind's becoming pretty light and variable up on the north end of things there, but still looking at snortlies, uh, I believe in the small craft level variety for Lynn Canal. High pressure slipping off to the southeast there. That'll keep enough gradient to keep the winds going over the southern area. So that should keep all the clouds out to the west, maybe reaching the coastline, maybe not. Definitely the showery condition which is scattered, will stay well south of the area. Weak high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska, very weak low, not really producing any type of weather here along the North Gulf Coast. And then that upper system, more clouds, more in the way of uh, areas of light snow from the Cusquam Valley southward there to northern Bristol Bay. And uh, kind of a trough beginning to change the pattern there while up to the north, a pretty good front dropping down from the Arctic will bring uh, occasional snow here, kind of a chance of snow back toward the uh, Point Lay area, but it looks really good for a snowy day coming up with uh, 20 knot westerlies there along the coast here across the, uh, well from about uh, Wainwright eastward all the way to Demarcation Point. And that front will continue to come southward Tuesday night and into the middle of next week, bringing a pretty cold air mass back down into the northwest interior, sagging southward with a trough. Southwest flow develops in advance of that, so we're looking at probably Maybe another shot of snow coming in over south central Alaska here, uh, maybe toward the middle or end of next week. Anyway, as it looks right now, out to the west though for Tuesday, high pressure, uh, fair skies, Alaska Peninsula, light wind conditions, Bristol Bay, very light winds. You can see there's no gradient at all here, really over all of southern Alaska into the Gulf, out to the west there. Even the Aleutians looking pretty good, just scattered showers, remnants of that frontal boundary, just a weak trough now. And then the winds start picking up, but not all that much. The main wind field there staying south, southwest to Shimian Atu. 
This thing lifting north, so you'll be in a little bit of a break out in that area. Temperatures this afternoon along the southeast coast were in the 30 to 40 degree range, 40 degrees at Sitka, 35 down at Annette, with uh, 39 degrees there at Elfin Cove, Skagway 33, upper 30s there at Yakutat, back in the lower 30s for the Cordova area, Valdez at 30 degrees even, Seward 28, Kenai 19 there, and Homer up to 33, 42 in Kodiak this afternoon, up in the valley, Talkeetna 19 above, Palmer at 23, 11 Golcana, Northway up to minus four from a morning low of about 26 below or so, 10 above, a Delta, then back below zero Fairbanks with minus three, about the same over at Tanana. Uh, chillier at Eagle with minus 12 and Fort Yukon minus 11, Bettles seven below, and three below at Ambler, minus nine at Selwick, Kotzebue five, uh, light snow reported both at, uh, let's see, that's uh, Buckland or Deering and also at Shishmaref, temperatures just under the 20 degree mark. Uh, single numbers uh, for the most part along the Arctic coast there, Cape Lisburn up to 17, Kaktovik, Barter Island at 12, and there's a minus one at McGrath, Bethel three above, Nome at eight, Savunga 24 degrees, and a uh, 15 degree reading at Macoriak, 36 at St. Paul, 39 on Alaska, there's that 46 at Atco, warm spot in the state today, and even Shimia up to 43 degrees. On Alaska, 39, 35 Cold Bay, and 22 up at King Salmon. Lows tonight, uh, down to again near or just a shade below zero around the greater King Salmon area. Warming into the uh, mid 20s to mid 30s along the peninsula, well above freezing out over the Aleutians. 30 St. Paul, teens St. Matthew Island, below zero here over much of the interior, all the way up to the Arctic coast, south of the Alaska Range, uh, maybe five below in the colder areas, two, 10 above with uh, lower 20s, places like Cordova, teens and 20s for the Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow, 30s for the southeast coast, 20s south of the Alaska Range here, north of the mountains, mostly above zero, although the Yukon Flats a little below zero, and Eagle though may get up to nine, Northway minus one, teens up along the western Arctic coast, southward now uh, to St. Lawrence Island, colder air coming southward with that upper level disturbance, and then for uh, flying weather tomorrow, look for some IFR from Wainwright eastward over to McKenzie River Delta, and also through the Bering Strait and the Chuck CC, north of St. Uh, Lawrence Island yet, IFR and Cook Inlet from uh, the Forelands there, right on up to Kanik Arm, due to the low clouds and fog bouncing around, and uh, marginal stuff off the coast. Out west, narrow band of IFR with a dying front or weakening front, kind of stays put through tomorrow, stationary right through there. Marginal VFR up to the Pribloffs, but well off the southwest coast. Just areas of marginal VFR now, mostly along the Arctic coast and somewhat over the north slope, and marginal conditions staying offshore from uh, Prince William Sound down to Kodiak, all in the VFR zone. Passes again for one more day, all VFR, Brooks Range, Alaska Range, rainy, Lake Clark, Merrill, Windy, all VFR, same forecast for Isabel, Mentasta, Tanita, VFR, Portage, VFR, Chilkoot and White, another day for VFR. Freezing levels now, everything's shifting 6,000 feet now out over the uh, Pribilof Islands with uh, 2,000 feet coming up through here, but the whole thing getting Press southward as that upper system comes south. It's early tomorrow morning. This will even be farther south by tomorrow afternoon. And for icing, none over the interior or the panhandle from the Arctic coast, just a narrow band with that front out here over the Aleutians. And uh, from there, jet stream, here's that upper level low. Yesterday right there, today it's there. Tomorrow it should be over Norton Sound by tomorrow afternoon. Continuing to come southward and actually enhance and uh, begin to change the pattern. Then the next day something comes down to the Arctic coast and the whole high shifts out to the west. Colder air drops southward uh, later in the week. And then for 9,000 feet, northeasterlies 20 to 25 down across St. Lawrence Island. Not much in the way of wind out here over the Aleutians, just uh, 15 to 20 knots or the Bering Sea. Light winds, southern Alaska, band of easterlies though through the central interior 20 to 25 knots. And that northeast flow continues over the Panhandle up to 25 with 35 knot winds around Dixon Entrance. Same pattern at 3,000 feet here, northeast 25, light variable winds, the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence wise, not too bad out here over the Aleutians, just a little bit of light to isolated moderate chop, but moderate chop for the panhandle, especially for small aircraft below 4,000 feet. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts.
We have cleaned over 1,500 miles of shoreline now. Basically, it comes down to just human muscle. I mean, we use chainsaws and knives. We find stuff from like Russia and China and Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia. It really doesn't matter where it comes from. We all just have to clean it up. Our goal right now in the next 10 or 11 days before the end of this year is just to how much we, we can collect before we get to remove it. What you see on the beach is a fraction of what's out there. You can pretty much break it down into three or four things. Uh, Water bottles, a lot of water bottles, styrofoam, fishing nets, fishing buoys. And that's 99% of what you find on the beach. Basically, just go along with chainsaws and muscle and uh, get the garbage, put it in sacks, and then from there, we haul it up above the log jam so it's out of any heavy surf or winter storms if it's gonna stay there for the year and uh, put it in super sacks. So yeah, we just progressively work down the coast just day in and day out. We have uh, like daily goals for ourselves that like if we're working at a pretty good rate, we'd like to keep on pace with about like, I don't know, about 20, 20 to 25 super sacks a day. So this is pile 102, and in this pile right now, we have two super sacks and one set of buoys. June 23rd here, this is what we've done today. Uh, we're up to 25 super sacks on the day, and I think for now we'll call it and just keep cleaning until tomorrow. My name is Hannah, and I represent a uh, organization in Japan called Japan Environmental Action Network. With over what 20 people working together to clean up the beach this is amazing like we all need to work together to you know clean up the beach as much as possible so like every single time I go back to Japan you know I go I, I talk to the fishermen and the fishermen's like it's a joke but they're like if you find any buoy with my logo you gotta bring it back and you know like always looking out for that stuff The crew's awesome. I mean, we're all skiers or snowboarders, and we're all friends. I mean, we're all good friends. My dad started it. He's the man behind the desk. He makes the ball roll, for sure. He works hard. He, uh, he doesn't give up easy, which is good. This stuff is uplifted quite a ways during an earthquake. I think my bag's about full already. Yeah. I'm gonna take a quick look back in here. See what else is back here. The thing about marine debris is it's kind of a hidden problem. Unless you're out there, especially on these remote beaches that are so heavily impacted, people don't see it. I remember probably a good 20 years ago, I, I was out on the outside of Montague Island, flew out there. And I was just utterly astounded by all the garbage out there. You walk out there and you wade through this stuff and you go, this isn't right. This shouldn't happen. I think a lot of it's just awareness. I mean, I've been boating out here for a long time and I wasn't even aware of how extensive the marine debris problem is out here. But uh, it's, a, it's a consumer world out there for sure. I mean, I don't know where people's values are, I guess, but mine is you got to kind of have a little bit of respect for the environment and uh, considering we live in it, especially in Alaska. I mean, a lot of people 
like the outdoors and like to be part of the outdoors. That's why they live here, and it's uh, they don't necessarily want to see it trashed. Welcome back. Uh, small craft advisories all along the coast, northeast 25 to 30 knots, a little more easterly up here to the north. Not that bad in the sea, six to seven feet, 30 knot north of the Liesling Canal. Small craft advisories for Stevens Passage and Clarence Strait down here, east 20 knots. Outlook for Tuesday. Small craft advisories, 25 knot winds out of the east for Clarence Strait. Lighter winds along the coast here, east northeast, 15 to 20 knots. Light winds up on the north coast there with uh, ten or four foot seas. Uh, no change for Lynn Canal. And for Prince William Sound, variable to northeast at 10. Variable winds cook inlet at 10 knots. Generally northeast here, 15 to 20 knots. Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, down across Kodiak Island, east northeast 15 to 20, north Gulf Coast. And then for Tuesday, swing the direction around. Southwesterlies on the light side, 10 to 15, Kodiak Island, variable for Kamishak Bay and light west winds for the Barrens, west-southwest 15 knots, and that's it for the North Gulf Coast. Variable winds, Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet. Bristol Bay, northeast at 10 knots there, right on down to Castle Cape, Castle Cape, uh, or from to Cape Sarachev, over to Castle Cape, north 15, and then from there on up to Sitkanak, northeast. Then for Tuesday, variable winds here on the bearing side of the peninsula, northeast, light northeasterlies on the Pacific side, east 15, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, light variable winds for Bristol Bay. And for the uh, Fox Islands, uh, southeast 15, and then pick up the small craft advisories here, that front really weakening, so just east 25 knots, sea still 13 to 16 feet, 20 to 30 knot winds out to the west. Tuesday, even lighter, southeast 20 here for the central Aleutian. Small craft advisories west of Adak to Shimia. And light variable winds now, especially for Unalaska Island. For the southwest coast, uh, north to northeast, 20 knots. Northerly winds 20 for St. Lawrence Island. Small craft advisories for the uh, St. Matthew Island zone and east 15 for the Permaloffs. Those going north at 10 there for Tuesday. So pretty light wind conditions again all across the Bering Sea to the coast. Still hanging on to some 20 knot northerlies there for St. Lawrence Island. Arctic coast, uh, central coast there all the way to demarcation point tomorrow. Northeast, pretty light, 10 knots. Pick it up to 15 here on the west side. Brisk wind advisories from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson. And then from there south, about 20 knots. For the next day, no change here from uh, Wales up to Cape Thompson. And then 15 knot north northwest become westerly at 20 knots there for the central coast with that front coming southward, west winds 20 knots extending all the way to demarcation point with snow through the entire area. 
And for tonight again, up that way, just some mostly cloudy skies and flurries there that will extend now down to St. Lawrence Island late tonight. Otherwise, no change over the interior. Areas of dense fog, Northern Cook Inlet, Kinnick Arm, those locations like uh, we've seen. And uh, again, light winds, no change for the southeast coast. Uh, a few more showers here, possibly in the Gulf of Alaska, some of which might start showing up around Kodiak Island late tonight. But uh, out to the west here, Pretty benign weather patterns, variable clouds, light winds. Front continues to slowly weaken. Keep some periods of light moisture in over the Adak Atka area, slowly diminishing winds. And that pattern continues through tomorrow as well there with that front stalled out in about this position. And fair skies, could see some sun for the Pribilofs, light east northeasterly, same pattern on Alaska. Alaska Peninsula, no change over southern Alaska. Look for a few more clouds possibly up over the central interior, maybe some flurries. That pattern more widespread in the North Slope and Arctic coast. And then better chance of snow, Yukon Delta, maybe shifting down to Nunavak Islands. That upper disturbance comes southward, no change for the Panhandle again. And then for uh, Tuesday, areas of snow here, Cuscoom Valley, southward to northern Bristol Bay with cloudy skies, continued dry, mostly fair, Copper River Basin and the Panhandle. Here comes that front down from the Arctic, uh, bringing some snow and those gusty or west winds at about 20 there from the central eastern Arctic coast, which will drop southward. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. grew up with public broadcasting. I've watched it my whole life. Alaska Public Media has brought so much into our lives and has contributed so much to our enjoyment and our continuing education about the world. I want to make certain that my daughter and my grandchildren, and hopefully great-grandchildren someday, learn through public broadcasting. I'm Susan Reeves. And I'm Jim Reeves. And we're proud supporters of Alaska Public Media.